All right, well, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Introduction to Programming Using Python. Uh, I'm uh, still joined by uh, Susan Iback. I'm still uh, Christopher Harrison. And uh, we last left off playing around with variables, playing around with strings, but not everything. No, we is is a string. No, we talked about how earlier how the purpose of programming is really to allow us to solve problems, mm -hmm. and a lot of the problems that we face day to day involve numbers. Yep. So one of the things we need to get into is how do we start dealing with numbers inside of our code? That's a great question. How do we start dealing with numbers inside of our code? I'm so glad you asked. Well, All thank right. you. It's, so let's. Uh... It, it's like I knew the the module. That was coming. <laughs> it's like you read the agenda. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the problems we do encounter when we're working with code do involve working with math. You might need to calculate how much you're going to pay on a mortgage. You know, you you know the total cost of a house or total cost of a car you want to purchase. Uh, you know, you want to pay it off in five years or 30 years and you need to calculate well what would the monthly payment be so you can figure out if you can afford that car or that mortgage mm -hmm. or maybe you're trying to figure out how much something is going to cost when you add taxes because that's one of those fun things you know in <laughs> Canada oh my gosh it's great fun different provinces have different tax levels there's a federal tax there's a provincial tax some items are taxed some aren't how much should I leave someone as a tip at a restaurant um, how much milk do I need to use in this recipe if I double the recipe? There's so many different scenarios where math is required to solve the problem. So there is going to be math today. So I'm afraid there is going to be math today. Okay. My right. apologies. But I promise we'll take a nice long break after the math, uh, a nice meal break there so that everybody can recover from, from the math. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very important that when we're working with our variables that we can store numbers in the variables as well as strings. And if you actually take a look at the slide here, you'll notice it just says, I've got a variable called age, I'm trying to stick with those meaningful variable names like we were talking about last module. And I've just set it to 42. Now, one of the things about this is how do, do you think, and I'm going to, uh, maybe Christopher, I could hit you up for this one. How do you think Python knows that that value age is a number and not a string? So if you look at the slide, what's different about that code? No quotes. Bingo. That is key. If you put quotes around 42, mm -hmm. it is now a string that contains a 4 and a 2. Yep. But when you store a value but it has no quotes around it, then uh, if it's a numeric value, you're now basically creating a numeric variable. And you can print it out, you can store a width, you can store a height, uh, you can do math with it. So you can multiply a width times a height. Now, a lot of the symbols you work with when you're doing math are very similar to what you normally work with. Um, if you notice here, I could do addition and subtraction, but you might notice here that I've got, um, that wasn't quite what I meant to do, sorry about that. <laughs> Fix that, uh, I went, meant to use the highlighter, that was my mistake. There we go. I do that constantly. Yeah, so you've got this asterisk symbol here between the words width and height. In programming languages, Python is no exception, most programming languages use an asterisk for multiplication. Even though I know when we were learning math in school, they used the little X symbol for mm -hmm. it. But the problem is X is a letter and it causes confusion. So we use the asterisk to indicate multiplication inside Python. Um, you can combine addition and subtraction, but addition is just a plus symbol, subtraction is just your standard minus symbol. You can use parentheses to indicate the order of operations in your math. So I can calculate a perimeter by taking double the width and adding that to double the height, or I could say double the width and the height added together. I mean, it's the same end result. So I can do basic math mm -hmm. using these different numeric values. The most common math operations you're likely to work with, you're definitely going to end up doing some addition and subtraction. Nice thing is the symbols on those are, <laughs> haven't changed. So okay. you already know this. Plus minus. Plus minus. Fantastic. Uh, division is the same slash you're used to. Multiplication is the one that's going to confuse you. Instead, it's an asterisk, not an X. If you want something to calculate a value, you want it squared, or you want it cubed, or to the power of something. The exponent is actually asterisk, asterisk. So that's one of the more confusing ones there, is the double asterisk. So if I take 5 and I want the number value of 5 squared, then it's going to be 5 asterisk, asterisk 2 gives me the squared value of 25. So that's 5 times 5. And here is the strangest one, modulo. You're going, what on earth is modulo, and what does that percent symbol mean? That does not <laughs> return, and it's important to realize that it is a percent symbol, but it's not a percentage. Mm -hmm. This is not going to take a value of um, 
0.01 and say, oh, 0.01 would be 1%, and right. 0.25 would be 25%. That's not what this is doing at all. Yep. If actually, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to sort of flip up a little whiteboard here. I think that's the easiest way to do this. Whoops. Not that slide, thank you. And if I go here and I give myself a little pen, uh, except I don't want a red pen. I think we need a better color so we can see a little better. Nice red pen. I want you to think back to when you learned long division. And for a lot of us, this was a long time ago, and we rarely do long division anymore. Do we have to admit how long ago it was? No. I, okay. I already explained right. I'm 29. Okay. So right. So yes. it, it can't be that long ago right. that I learned long division. Right, because you're 29. That's right. Yes. So let's say I've got a number, uh, I've got the number 5. And I want to, um, and apparently my fingers aren't as good at drawing as Christopher's, so I'm going to have to use a mouse here. So I've got the number 5, and I want to divide the number... Uh, 43, I want to divide it by 5. Okay. And you think back to how we were taught to do this. You would say, well, 5 goes into 43 eight times. Okay. So we'd write the number 8 up here. Yep. And we go 8 times 5 equals 40, which leaves me a remainder of 3. Okay. Now, that remainder, if I can just get my little highlighter going, this remainder, that's what's returned by modulo. Okay. So modulo actually returns the remainder of a division. I could see that being very helpful if I'm looking for like striping or if I need to do something every like fifth time. I, I could see that being very helpful for, for things like that. Well, if you've ever been in, a, looked at a really big report, and when you look at a big report or sometimes even on an Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and you've got a lot of data displayed on the screen, have you ever noticed that sometimes some of the options for formatting your table allow you to highlight every second line? Well, the coder had to have some way of saying, how do I know I'm on the second line, the fourth line, the sixth line? Modulo is a programmer's trick for detecting, do this every second time, or do this every <laughs> third time, or do this every fourth time. Because if you do a, let's say you want to do something every second time. Basically, you say, if the modulo is zero, mm -hmm. if, if modulus two returns a zero, so if the remainder is zero, when I divide by two, I'm on the second time or the fourth time or the sixth time or the eighth time. Yep. I know some of you are out there going, whatever you say, Susan, I'm totally <laughs> lost. Uh, just to say, you will encounter situations. It's a programmer's trick uh, for detecting a frequency of something to do something every second time, third time. It's also a security feature that's used in a lot of number generation. Your credit cards a lot of times use modulo behind the scenes. Uh, employee numbers. What they'll often do is to see if a credit card number is a valid number. So you can't just type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I guess that'd be 9, 10, 1, 2, 3 as a credit card number and hope that somebody out there has a credit card number so hey I can buy this book with that random stranger's credit card number. What they actually do is they use a modulo and a, inside a formula to generate credit card numbers. So your American Express or Visa or MasterCard number, the way it's generated is they take a number, they multiply it usually by 11, and then they add 50 to it or 100 to it. So anytime they get a credit card number, they go, if I can subtract this 50 and divide it by 11, and that gives me no remainder, I know it's at least theoretically possible that's a valid credit card number. So, I said, don't get too stressed out over it. Uh, I don't expect you to be coding things with modulo in the next 30 minutes, but I just want you to be aware that this is a function that although we don't use it a lot day to day in our lives, it comes up remarkably often in certain scenarios when you're writing code. Mm -hmm. So, that's just something to be aware of. And it's the percentage symbol is the way we do it in Python. It's one of the ones where the syntax really varies from programming language to programming yeah. language. Yeah, sometimes it's a backslash. Um, the, that Some of them have side, functions. Yeah, 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 it really just kind of depends. So Python, we do have it. It's the percent symbol.